This tutorial is going to demonstrate how to use two of the new functions in 3D Combine together to create a quite useful effect. That is, we're going to show you how to take photos from your mobile phone, convert them into 3D, and then display those 3D images in the Oculus Quest or Rift headsets. Uh, and we're going to do that without requiring any other third-party code or application for the uh, Oculus Rift or the Oculus Quest. So the first thing we need to explain is the right mode to take the photos in on your phone. So you will need to have a modern phone that supports portrait mode. And I'll illustrate now what that does. So if I go File, Open Images, and Open 2D left. So just open the images it would normally be viewed. I can select a photo here, which, now this photo was taken on the uh, Google Pixel 3 line of phones. And as you can see, the foreground is sharp, but the background is blurred. And this is due to an effect called bokeh, where the phone automatically blurs the background in portrait mode to simulate the effect of taking the photo with an expensive prime lens camera. So often when you take, see photos taken by a professional photographer, you'll see that background blur effect. Now in order for the phone to do that, it actually has to work out which bits are background and which bits are foreground. And when it does that, it generates a depth map. If we can extract that depth map, then we can use that to generate a true 3D image. Now, 3D Combine supports various phones uh, and the list of supported phones will continue to grow with time. Um, so if your phone doesn't work, uh, you can always send us an email, maybe uh, include the image as a sample and we'll see whether we can add it. Uh, but for the time being, uh, the Google Pixel 3 and 4 phones, the Samsung Note, the iPhone, uh, various other phones are, are already supported. So in order to open one of these uh, files and extract the depth map, rather than open it as 2D, we open it as 3D. So I go File, Open Images, 3D. And I select exactly the same file as before. But now because I've selected 3D, 3D Combine will try and process it as a 3D image. It will detect the depth map and it will put it here on the right hand side. So now I have my same 2D image as before, but now I have a depth map. And I can use that depth map to create a 3D image within 3D Combine very simply by going to the depth menu, selecting make 3D. I select the effect. So the larger the effect, the more the, th the image will pop out in 3D but the more likely they are to have artifacts in there that can generate a bit of eye strain uh, if the depth map isn't perfect. So I'm going to select 0.5 for this and I'll allow it to pre-process the depth map to reduce any artifacts. And as you can see, we now have a right hand eye view. If I go preview 3D uh, and I select color anaglyph as the viewing format, that you can see that that is a genuine 3D image and if you have red and green glasses handy you'll be able to see this image now in 3D. Uh, I can save that as a 3D image simply by clicking on save image and I'm just going to say output bird so overwrite an existing file. Okay so that's all there is to generate a 3D image from uh, a mobile phone image. Now I, there were a few steps involved in that um, so I'm just going to show you a shortcut which is to use the guides menu. So you can go guides, image 2D to 3D from portrait mode photo and that will step you through the steps that we've just done by hand to generate your 3D image. However we don't just want a 3D image out of this, we want an image that we can view in our Oculus headset. So we need to make use of at least one more function to do so. Uh, and that function is under the VR menu and it's the Oculus button. And that will create a virtual panorama for us to view in our headset. Before I do that, I'm also going to go automatic and auto converge. Now this is an optional step, but what it does is it minimizes the discrepancy between the left and the right images to minimize eye, eye strain in your full screen view. So you don't have to do it, but if you find that you get eye strain when viewing it in the headset, this is a good option to choose. And to be honest, you, it doesn't really do any damage to, to run it by default. So there you go, you can see it's made a slight adjustment to the images. I'm now gonna go VR, Oculus. Now this will generate the image for viewing in the headset. 
the first thing I need to choose is the field of view that I want this picture to, to take up. So if I was to select one, it would fill my entire field of view. Uh, and it would probably be horrible and distorted and you wouldn't be able to view it. Um, a value of around 0.4 is quite nice. It provides a big image, a kind of pseudo immersive feeling without inducing eye strain. Um, you can go smaller certainly, you might be able to go a little bit bigger depending on your photos. So I'm going to accept the default. And now I need to select the size of panorama. So um, if I'm using the Oculus Quest Gallery to view these, it defaults to 180 degree panoramas. So those are the ones where you can't see behind you. Uh, and if I'm using Oculus 360 photos on the Oculus Rift, uh, then you need to use a 360 degree panorama. Uh, if you are using a different headset, then obviously choose the option that is correct for the software within that headset. So I'm going to assume we're using an Oculus Quest here and select 180 degrees and OK. Now you can see I have a virtual panorama with the pre-distorted image in the middle and that's ready to view on the headset. To save it, I go Preview 3D again. I need to make sure that I've selected the parallel output and I click on Save Image. Now one thing to notice is that you need to make sure that you're in your This PC Pictures folder so that the Oculus software will pick up the photo. Uh, so if you're in the Oculus uh, Rift, that's the default folder that the gallery view will use and if you're on the Rift, you can either copy the file across onto the Rift itself, or you can use the DLNA browser to browse to this folder on your PC. So I'm going to overwrite my previous output. I'm done. The final thing I just want to show is to illustrate that you can do this on multiple photos at, at the same time. So if I click on the filters list, you can see all the operations I've applied on that photo. And you can actually batch apply these to a set of photos now. So if I go again, File, Open Images, 3D, exactly as I did before, but I now select multiple photos, you'll see these buttons become enabled at the top, forward and backwards. And that allows me to flick through multiple photos. So you can see I have another photo here, again taken in portrait mode. And you'll notice that just because it's in portrait mode doesn't mean you have to hold your phone vertically. You can hold it in what is considered a landscape view within portrait mode and you will still get a 3D photo, which is how this one's been done. So again, I, do, I go depth, make 3D. I'm just going to accept the defaults this time. Automatic, auto converge. and then VR, Oculus, and I'm gonna keep the defaults again. And if I look at filters, I can see what it's going to apply to each image. And if I flick through the images, it will apply all these filters one after another to the image. And that's why it takes a second to flip between the images because it needs to apply all of these filters to it. And then when I'm happy with the filters, again, I go preview 3D and parallel save image exactly as before but this time it won't prompt me for a file name it will prompt me for a folder because it's processing multiple images so again i'll select something within this pc and pictures jpeg is the output and it will now batch save so it'll save both the first image and the second image and the third up to however many photos that you've selected as 3d ready to view in your oculus quest headset it's worth pointing out that if you have photos uh, that you've taken on your phone that aren't in portrait mode, there are some options within the depth menu to convert 2D images to 3D, but they're covered in a separate, tu separate tutorial and I'm not going to go through them now. For the best quality, use the portrait mode on your phone to generate the real depth map.